Welcome back to BAM's Global Scene Amsterdam. In the last episode you saw how communities are created to support musicians. Now we take a look at the role of the artist as an entrepreneur. In these times of economic turmoil and rapid technological change, how do Amsterdam's musicians make the music industry work for them? Amsterdam is an easy city to make music. There's lots of opportunities to play. You know, you can play every day if you want. What I can say about my work here is that I'm able to make a living. I even get jobs through word of mouth. I, I don't have to send out you know, these mass emails or, or visit venues. I don't know that I'd be able to do that anywhere else. I've always been uh, busy with music. And uh, when I got to uh, the east of the Netherlands, I played there in a lot of um, campus, uh, campus bands. I also play a lot of uh, cover bands and stuff because I, you know, I'm uh, completely dependent on music. I, uh, I don't have a day job or something. What do they try and say? Do they think they're doing okay? I'm crawling up in So despite the challenges, some artists can make a living out of music. Is this reality the same across the industry? I think uh, uh, there, there are loads of bands who, uh, uh, you know, even bands who are doing uh, relatively well and getting airplay on, on uh, for instance, to FM, who uh, have to have uh, jobs on the side to, uh, to have a, a normal income. It's a, it's a common thing of having all these side jobs besides be, being a musician. I think if you uh, do this really uh, small investigation, uh, I think you can find really great side jobs <laughs> of musicians. I think it's so hard to, to make money in Amsterdam with music because there's so much competition uh, that uh, for the, the people that book you, they, they can easily choose someone else who is willing to play for nothing. If they, if they book a band or, or an artist, they, uh, they don't want to pay much for it because they already pay so much for other stuff. I think that a lot of Dutch bands are afraid to go for music 100%, like to no, no holding back, not burning your bridges behind you, just going 100% just for the music. I, th I think it's changing over the last few years, but before that a lot of bands, they would have a little job on the side. Yeah, if they can live of it, that's for m most musicians, that's enough. If you, if you can buy your food and, and you can uh, maybe uh, once every half year buy, buy some new clothes, to, to wear that for many musicians that that's enough it's, it's something something you you must love it must be something that you would do anyway so if you're making money out of it and you can live of it that's just perfect I think I think there's a lot of possibilities for all kinds of music, all kinds of uh, musicians, all kinds of people who do have like a creative uh, a profession. But I do feel it all boils down to the individual. You know, if if you're up to it, if you're if you're willing to to stick your neck out, and if you're willing to um, to go the extra mile. You know, when I made this last record, then sometime. Um, I think then my name was spread out enough that a label also had the guts to step in. Like they, they were like, oh, okay, we have a ground to build on from, uh, which was, I think, very important for them. But not really do it yourself and that uh, when it comes to putting music out, I guess, we are on a record label yeah. or two. So they, they um, take care of the printing and the distribution and uh, the promotion, everything that uh, comes that with sure. it. There's a lot of doors that, that stay closed when you're do-it-yourselfing, uh, that open when there's a label involved. And th I think that's uh, sad in a way, but it's, it is the reality. Um, and that's also why 
one of the reasons, I would say, that I've chosen to work with a bigger label. If being connected with a record label still has such benefits, why are so many musicians doing it for themselves? Um, well, the reason why I'm doing everything by myself is because I asked a lot of my colleagues why they, of what their experiences were with record companies and so forth. Um, and basically 80% of what I heard was uh, quite negative. A lot of frustration of people not calling back, not mailing back. Uh, really tough communication and also really negative atmospheres of working on something that should be a labor of love. Do-it-yourself artists, I don't know if it's typically Dutch, and probably when you look at the history of Holland, um, there are a lot of entrepreneurs in Holland. We have that in our, in our feel, in our culture, so maybe that's why a lot of artists are doing it themselves uh, and are really getting successful. So yeah, I think it's a healthy thing, because um, yeah, you, you, the a record company used to be something of a, a, a bank, for lack of a better word, a company where you could get money to record uh, a, a usually very expensive album. Uh, that all has changed, so every band that wants to make a record can make a record and can get noticed. So I actually love it because, you know, music keeps on coming and uh, more than it used to be, uh, used to be a couple of years ago. It appears then there is still a place for record labels alongside the DIY ethic, but it's also clear that the role of the artist has changed massively. In the next episode we will check out the people and organizations supporting the scene. Watch it at BAM.TV!